so we're trying to mold this tube because the stainless steel accessories are different from the water ones so we went through first through this one then we went to this one and uh, now we got it into this one right here so we heat it up and then we put it in the, the bucket of water so that's about it now we got to take this one out there you go see and now this one has the measurements we need hey? see so now it goes in before look at the difference <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to heat this one up. Okay. Put it inside here. So we put it on the floor. Okay. While I twist it around, another person heats it up. So we have this already molded. Um, it really gives for what we want. It's for outside here. I'll show you guys just now. And now we got our increments, okay? So you can go from 90 to 125. The tube that was there, stainless steel, is 100, but you don't get this in 100. And 100 and 10 would also be too much. So this is what we got, and this is what we have to work with, okay? That's how life works. <laughs> Okay, so see, this is the idea. We're gonna take this, put this in here, okay, and uh, I don't know which way we're gonna turn it, maybe like this, and then the bigger tube will come, more or less until here only, and go this way because we're gonna have the rooftop for the cars. Can't really leave this here because uh, it won't stay on its own. It needs like a tube and a, a clamp, you know, uh, against the wall, for example, so that we don't have to put holes on the, on the panel. So, I've already got this part. This was going to the floor, and our better can go all the way on top of the, the little garden here, all the way down there. And we don't have puddles of water, you know, like we normally do. In the cable, I'm going to also put it through a special tubing for outdoor. Uh, it won't have a box outside, I'm going to remove that. It's not going to stay in there. And uh, yes, better installation. That's how this we're going to do.
Okay guys, so as you can see this um, Sexo is quite worn off so I'm going to see if I can get this out and repaint it and then glue it back and do the same to the Citroen which I have another Citroen uh, that last car event where I went that had the used car parts I actually got a Citroen used uh, but in much better condition than this one so let's see how it goes I got my plastic tools to do the job and uh, let's see if it doesn't break <laughs> P everyone thank you Jesus there's a bit of dirt here hey, how did that get dirty so being sand from yes okay so as I was saying thank you Jesus for helping me because they did not break and I'm so happy because if they had broken um, I would have been in big big trouble because I've searched everywhere for this and it is not easy to get I'd have to get it like on eBay and what a what and they all come scratched anyway so I could probably get the Citroen and then I couldn't get the Saxo vice versa so I don't want this metallic chrome color which will disappear always with time I'm gonna go for a dark color like this color right here and I got epoxy primer special for plastics and I got epoxy paint also for plastic and I know it will just withstand the time so that's what I'm going to do so I managed to get all the the residue out there are some little markings from like old age which um, it's like a, I don't know I think it's it will eventually come out but it will always stay a little shadow but because I'm going to use the exact original ones all will go well and here as well then another problem that I didn't know that it had holes you know in pins in, that's we go inside the holes I thought it would just be a symbol like glued on but we could have broken so easy and I didn't know so I was just very gentle but still it's not easy even to get the glue out this was took me like half an hour just to work on the glue so and the benches are ready now they're looking more similar to the table actually this one stayed with more fire chaos color but um, they still look much better they were darker you know with the darker varnish so I'm much happier with the way they're looking now very very cool I actually bought these this table and the benches at a shop that they were like um, it was like they wanted to get rid of it so I bought it very cheap it was in bad condition and um, second year second or third year using them always forget time goes by you know just don't remember anymore <laughs> okay beautiful view just getting better and better I cut the grass but then I'll show you guys check that out everyone those two monument rocks right there it's actually quite big <laughs> looks beautiful what you can do with two rocks that are just in underneath the land in your garden eh? I have to fix up this cable stuff and everything I can't use this cable it's too old everything is going brilliant people even the mint caught up amazing everything is success that's one I thought it would go up, but I think that one went, and that one, the two that were eaten. So I'm gonna get another two. I was just trying to see if the everything would balance itself, you know. Don't always be changing, so as people think I'm faking this. <laughs> That's why I document everything that I change, so you guys know. Blueberries are getting there. Blackberries are starting to mature raspberries I think they chilled for now yes 
tomatoes tomatoes we have like 16 of them already growing how cool is that guys we got our arugula already quite big our spinach which we have to take out to start eating the spinach so now I'm going to show you guys how to prepare the spinach for the table and all the rest is brilliant as you can see what a difference I eh, guess what a difference how full it became of life this little small garden <laughs> Still haven't gotten her, her little friend. I'm still looking. I'm very indecisive about which one to get. We got the curtains almost done for the chicken place. Our plums are beautifully tasty. And uh, our red plums are starting to mature too much now. So it starts losing the taste, you know, it's not that uh, sweetness anymore. So all this is going to attract a lot of beetles I'm expecting it's going to attract a lot of beetles guys I'm actually hoping that that happens so today I checked but no signs of beetles because they love these things when they're on the floor but last year we didn't have I put in the description the names of the beetles that I'm hoping to get to form as content but normally it's by surprise one of the biggest ones in europe quite cool let's see what happens so we're gonna leave this okay do its thing and some of it goes to the compost whatever we take from the trees and don't need you know reuse it this other plum tree although it looks dry um i scraped it the other day it's green so it took onto the ground so once we got the first green leaves, I'll show you guys. And our peach tree, which was only a branch, if you guys remember. Um, I also scraped it the other day. And it was also green. So as soon as we get our first green leaves, it will be a celebration. It's like a miracle, you know. Fall off the tree, the branch, and just picked on. You can see it's still not given up. But I'm positive. I have faith that it picked up. All this is nothing compared to what it will be. Just wait and see, guys. Wait and see. Cut the grass the other day. And um, now I'm going to get rid of this junk, pile of junk here. Some of it is going to go to the compost, leaves, and stuff. Uh, the rest is going to go to the garbage then get rid of all the stuff here isn't a lot but I like everything tidy I just didn't cut mint because I have a lot of mints growing in the garden and um, so I didn't cut the mints because uh, everyone that comes here just likes to nip the leaves and smell it you know it's got a beautiful um, smell to it although the best one is the chocolate mint right there that is the best one that's beautiful and we got the proper mints down there this one is like a more savage one i don't know how it grew here but it's so quite beautiful even if when i cut it by mistake with the uh, mowing machine it just releases such a smell <laughs> amazing hey little one she's all happy she boots she's starting to lay eggs again so that means she's really happy with her new chicken palace which is almost almost done I'm really preparing all the stuff you guys see just wait and see guys and the Jeep the Jeep the Jeep the Jeep so had to take the water from the radiator out um, had to take this tube out let me put some light here sorry guys take that tube out why because every time I'm steering um, the steering box pump, okay, the steering pump, hydraulic pump for the steering, is moving. And it's not the support, and it's not the beam which the support is uh, welded on, okay. Um, I'm actually going to have to repaint there because 
just from the water spilling there, it's really got a bit rusty. So um, this is a big beam that go across the whole Jeep. You know, the good old days when they used to make cars very strong. <laughs> you see there? So this whole beam, it's quite thick as you can see, very thick. Can't even see the end of the wall here. Although it does have a plate here, but you guys can see how thick it is. It must be like uh, five, six millimeters, six millimeter more or less. So it goes from once, from the front all the way to the rear. So what happens is because I think we built um, better tires, which are a bit bigger, now it's forcing a bit this whole pump here. So the problem is that the support doesn't come all the way to the top. This pump should be like uh, have a support or flat from top to bottom and the supports will get the whole pump, you know. But what's happening is that the, the structure is like starting to bend a bit and that's not good. So bad things are going to happen. Um, so instead of reinforcing the supports, which is not needed because that's not the problem. And uh, it's already got like a reinforcement on this side. As you can see here, you see this ball, this one here, goes from all from there, from the main chassis, all the way to the support of the steering pump. You see, that then goes to that bar down there, has the all the MU uh, shock to make the steering not so light. Okay, but it's not from that because even if you take the shock out, it continues. What happens is that this whole thing was fixed, you know. The whole pump was dismounted and um, all refurbished. So all those, um, how do you say? All those, all that leverage that it used to have, because it was wear and tear, you know? Um, all that get those gaps, it doesn't have it anymore. So it's so tight now that now it's, um, it's starting to show more bending on the on the hydraulic steering pump and because the tires are a bit bigger than what they are uh, I think this isn't a good manufacturing system the way it was manufactured isn't good wasn't very smart so there was a fail there you know so what we're doing is trying to improve what was badly done from factory so um, what I'm going to do is, I can't come from down here, from the support, because it's no use. I have to support this top part to the, the chassis, okay? So what I'm designing is a support that will get these two screws. I think it's going to be sufficient, just these two. I don't think I have to come all the way to these as well. And it will come a thick steel plate to here. Okay, and then I'll tighten it onto this part right here. Okay, get this strong um, where it's um, folded. Okay, the strong point right here, and just um, tighten it right here. Like that will give me strength, and this will not move. Like the way I'm going from left to forward quick when I'm like overtaking and all this stuff, it won't give me this um, left to right, like. Um, difference you know so i'm turning left then i have to too much to the right and then too much to the left and it's just it doesn't feel right when i'm driving it doesn't feel safe so that's what i'm doing on the jeep guys and that's why i've been a bit delayed because too many problems came up so the good thing is that we're getting a solution for all of them and i'm going to get it all on video for you guys so taking care of this um the brake um accumulator brake oil accumulator which is spilling uh, to the top i don't want it spilling here because it's going to corrode this whole thing here so i'm going to take it out here and put it more in, onto this side and make a little plate where i can put it see i unscrewed here the the air pump the air compressor for the rear traction blocking um i'm going to push it more forward and this is going to come more here because it's only one tube that has to be a bit longer and this is a rubber one so it's easy this is a rubber which might be like silicone or that so i have to get 
this or I can just like use this length just to push it towards here and I'm gonna put like a little plate stainless steel plate on the bottom where I can just accumulate all the oil that starts spilling out you see? so that's the plan and I think it will all be ready for our trips to the mountain to the beach because we're going to do like camping stuff we're going to do so much content with this in summer it's going to be very interesting because we're going to have some cool trips some cool activities cooking outdoor so that's the recap of this whole why is this open <laughs> so we we're getting into everything that we announced on the videos we're getting into okay that's what i'm doing with some help and uh, so that you guys know that everything is, that's talked about on the video is getting dealt with. I haven't forgotten other stuff that I talked about, which I'm also starting to take care of. Um, so yes, everything is coming up, guys. Everything. So with this, guys, um, gonna end the video here. Gonna go watch my football match, Portugal against Georgia. Um, I'm hoping we're gonna win. We have passed, okay, to the. Um, to the eight finals, um, to the final eight, but we have to win first place in the group so that we can play against the weakest team, you know, the next, um, once we get into the final eight. So, hoping they're gonna win. I know we're gonna win. Yes. Soon. <laughs> and um, see you guys on the next one. Out.